Hey, Bulldogs, this is Mr. Rivera, and I have Marco Morales, and he's going to be talking about a very important part of our community, and that's about our farm workers. A big part of our community and a big part of celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month is to talk about the farm worker appreciation. And so Marco over here works with the families that work in the fields that are working hard in Skagit Valley. So Marco, why don't you tell us how long you've been with the district and your position at Mount Vernon School District. Thank you, Ramon. Yeah, my name is Marco Morales, and I'm the district's migrant graduation specialist, and I've been with the district for, for one year, so this would be my, my second year here at the district. And you replaced a legend, right? Who's the, the legend that you uh, replaced um, uh, your, in your position? Yeah, so I, I replaced Janice Blackmore, who did my position for, I think, about, um, I want to say, 10 years. Uh, so about 10 or 11 years, and so I'm, I'm coming in fresh uh, with this new position, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here at the, at the Malvern School District. Uh, part of that is because uh, I'm an alumni of um, this district. I, I graduated from Auburn High School in 2007. Uh, I got to go to a, uh, I got to go to Mount Baker as a middle schooler and a couple elementaries. I went. So the word migrant, migrant means that their parents or families work in agriculture, right? Can you tell us more to our community, the Bulldog community, what a migrant student means? Yeah, so my, migrant students are students whose, whose parents uh, uh, work in either agriculture or the fisheries. So those particular things and that, and that they move from one place to, to another for, for, for a job, right? So if a, a, if a student's parents are moving from, let's say, Mount Vernon to, to Linden or to Ferndale or to California or to Texas or they're moving somewhere else for, for the purpose of looking for work, um, then that's what classifies a student as a migrant student. Uh, the move usually has to happen within uh, at least once within two years. So as long as that's happening, then, then they continue to be a uh, migrant student. Now, Marco, I know we have some families that work the apples in Wenatchee and work the blueberries over here and work in things. So they live in different cities, right? Some of the students that you work with or different states, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so we have, we have that. We have a, a, a lot of students that... Um, that migrate, um, you know, between b both b both parts of the state, and then we also have a lot of students that you know that they go and they, they live part of the year in the San Joaquin Valley in California, and then come up to the Skagit Valley um, later in the year. Um, so yeah, so they're you know so they're moving from region to region and, and sometimes state to state. How important is the farm working community in Mount Vernon? Yeah, I mean hugely important. I think. Um, you know, I, I think I saw an, an article recently that I think it's like a, I think it's, I don't know if it's on an annual basis or, or, or what, what the time frame is, but it's about a $300 million, uh, $300 million industry here in, here in the county, right? So just, just think about how much money that is, $300 million, right? It's like a third of a, you know, like less, I guess a little less than a third of a billion, right? To try to wrap your mind around how much a billion dollars is. And, you know, it's, it's extremely important. I think, you know, um, farm workers are, are really essential uh, you know, they've been deemed essential workers are essential to our society, right? I mean, if somebody doesn't work, doesn't work picking, you know, picking, you know, anything in the field, then we don't, we don't eat, right? It's pretty, it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, and so uh, farm workers are extremely important. I think, uh, I, you know, we we're having this conversation yesterday over the phone when we were talking about this, but one of the things that we often, um, I think, are not aware of is, Really, the farm work, how, how long the farm worker president has been here in the here in the in the Skagit Valley, um, you know, for my for my so, uh, so for my bachelor's degree, I have a master's degree too. But for for my bachelor's degree, my my thesis was on on Latinos uh, in Washington State, um, and and in my in my thesis, one of the things that I you know that I talked about is how there has been a, a sizable population of of, of, of Mexicans, Mexicanos. In, in this community since the, since, since the 1940s, right? And the, the, the part of the reason that is, is because in the 40s, uh, as the United States was, was fighting World War II um, and, you know, and, and was off to Europe, there was, a, there was a shortage of labor in this community because a lot of people were going off to work at Boeing, right? So they needed to work at Boeing to build planes uh, to be able to fight the war in Europe. And so the U.S. had a, they, they initiated a program called the Bracero Program where they brought uh, workers from overseas, particularly from Mexico. And uh, you know what, something that is very fascinating is that um, these workers were brought up in trains, mostly buses, trains. Um, but if you're ever in Burlington, on, um, on if you're ever in Burlington, um, over, um, over, in downtown, over in downtown Burlington, 
that is where the railroad is at that's actually where workers used to be dropped off in the 40s and i think a lot of people don't know that so they you know the the the, the, the actually that's that's that was one of the final stops from the train all the way from down south right and from so mexico. all the way from mexico yeah this was one of the final stops it would go all across the west coast and this just dropping workers off um and so to think about that that even then right as as essential as farm workers are essential to our well-being today as we're seeing in the pandemic where you know our society is able to function because they continue to work right in that time period our society was able to function because they were able to work right because if it wasn't for them working f to be able to feed not only the american population but also the troops overseas then it the, then then the victory of world war ii was m maybe not possible right and so that's that's how that's how important that farm worker is so i i just want to thank marco for coming here today and you know what? what's great, a part of our Hispanic Heritage Celebration Month is we're talking about appreciating the farm workers. The farming community in, in Mount Vernon and Skagit Valley is so important. And that's why I wanted to bring Marco. He is a leader in our community. He gets involved in the community. He graduated and came back to help his community because he loves our community right marco do you have anything else to say to our to our bulldog fans out there well i just want to say you know very happy to get the invitation um i think you know reach out to me um if you you know if you're like oh i connected with that guy i want to see you want to see what's up how's it going uh you know you can uh, you can always reach out to me uh, you can probably find my email uh we'll make sure that the email's on the show also can you tell us if they could qualify because there's a way to qualify for the migrant program because they may be watching this video at home and say maybe that's a program that i should be involved in how how would a student get involved in the migrant program because there's scholarships there's help with um passing to graduate and books and why don't you talk about how a student could join the migrant program yeah so if they reach out to me um or or actually or, or miss gonzalez here at the high school um they're able to kind of be identified um, you know, and I th I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't know I was a migrant student until I think I was like a sophomore in high school, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, I and, and it was one of those things like, I don't know what that is, right? So it was like, it was more when I started getting behind in school when I was like, oh, like, like what's the deal, right? And it was like, but it was like the, that moment that I realized, right? And I think, you know, I think the, the sooner kids are able to access resources, the better they're going to be off, right? And so... Um, if you're just like, hey, maybe I qualify, maybe I don't, and it might be that maybe you you already are, right? And 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 that you already are, but just maybe you're just doing well. So maybe you know people haven't really reached out to you because I think what happens a lot of times is that we tend to reach out to the kids that maybe are not doing as well, um, and the kids that are really doing really well, it's like you know they're already doing well to begin with. Um, but but hey, but you know, reach out to us, um, and I'm happy to talk to you. If not, reach out to Miss Gonzalez here here at the high school, and and uh, we'll get you all uh, straight away. Shout out to Miss Gonzalez. Anyway, I want to tell you that when you go to college, they have something called the CAMP program, and they still continue to work with migrant students. They help you with your first year of college. So, and sometimes they even give you extra money to go to school for books and things. So please get involved in our migrant program. It's uh, one of the best resources that you could do. And um, I want to thank Marco again, and I want to thank you, the Bulldog community, Remember, Hispanic Heritage Month is September 15th to October 15th, and we're going to have great discussions, great things that are going to happen. Thank you, Margos. Go Bulldogs. And we'll see you at the next episode.